Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries in John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Eternal life, that is. Uh, this is going to be kind of a critique of the so-called CI or Christian Identity Movement. Now, not every body that believes in identity believes the same things. There's a lot of variation. And I my personal opinion is a lot of these people that are, especially the ones that are popular, that were given money out and and on a lot of platforms are from the devil. Do you know that there are identities, so-called preachers in the past that even deny that there is a, there is a devil, Satan? Yeah. One of their other things is they claim the King James Bible is wrong. And they use other things. So, a uh, number of years ago, one of the big ones, one of the big Bibles that they were pushing was the Farrar Fenton Bible. F-E-R-R-A-R-F-E-N-T-O-N. -R 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 now, there are two sets of manuscripts, basically. You could use the Vatican Catholic minority manuscripts, or you could use the majority Greek church manuscripts. You ever heard of Thessalonians, Colossians, Philippians, Corinthians? Those were Greek cities with churches that Paul wrote to. The New Testament was written in Greek, not Latin. Uh, in the past, you ever heard of the Spanish Inquisition? Yeah, well, it was a converted you-know-who in Spain that killed Christians that dared to have a copy of the Bible. And... They try to keep people from even having a Bible in their own language. And you're going to run to these people for their manuscripts to use for a Bible? Really? I don't think so. Well, I mean, you can if you want to. But the only two Bibles that I know that use the Greek majority texts in modern times, not, not in times past, but modern times, is the Geneva and the King James Bible. And a lot of people will, uh, those of the so-called identity flavor, will say, oh, the King James is wrong. It's, it's an error. It's no good. Now, the Farrar Fenton has fallen out of favor in the last, oh, I don't know, 10, 15, 20 years. But he used the Vatican manuscripts. He also trusted a couple of occultists by the name of Westcott and Hort, which all your modern Bibles use Westcott and Hort. They dabbled in the occult. They believed in Darwinian evolution and uh, Mary worship. Fenton was not a Bible scholar. Then again, Noah's Fink, neither is Fink of Christogenia, who made his own Bible. Uh, if you get on his bad side, he'll cuss you out and ban you. That shows the fruit of the Spirit. Uh, even though he's got some good information on that site. But uh, Fenton even went so far to say that Jonah was not swallowed by a great fish or a whale. Oh no, that was the name of the ship 
that he was on. It was called the great fish. Isn't it funny that Jesus says that Jonah was in the whale's belly for three days and three nights? Huh. I guess Jesus didn't know that was the name of the ship, huh? Oh, yeah. In his notes on Jonah chapter 2 and verse 1, Fenton wrote, Great fish was the name of the ship mistranslated, mistranslated whale in the version of the Greek translators whose blunder has been repeated by all subsequent translators in all languages to the perplexity of their readers until I decided to go back to the original statement of the prophet in his own Hebrew for our Fenton, quote and unquote. Huh. In Matthew 12, 40, in the King James, Jesus speaks and says, For as Jonas was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Huh. So, am I going to believe Farrar Fenton, or am I going to believe Jesus? Boy, that's a tough one. So, Fenton was a businessman not a scholar of the Bible but and and trust me I don't I do not claim to be a Bible scholar by any stretch of the imagination so why are we going to run to Vatican manuscripts uh, to get your Bible you know the people that killed people the fake church that killed people for daring to put the Bible languages into the common man's hand. They translated the Hebrew and the Greek so that people could read it in German and English and other languages that I'm not too familiar with. Hmm. In Galatians 3.29, Jesus said in the King James, and if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed, or children, and heirs according to the promise. Doesn't say you become spiritually. Nope, says you are. In Matthew 10, 6, Jesus said, But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Okay. Not the whole world. Did you ever notice Paul never went to India? Paul never went to China? Paul never went to Japan? Paul never went to Mongolia? Never went to India? I wonder why that is. He never went to Mexico. He didn't go to the Congo. Where did he go? Greece. What a coincidence that the New Testament was written in Greek. Or, or is that a coincidence? Uh, yeah. So, for our Fenton, um, all I know is all the people that he uh, acknowledged as his mentors, I guess you could say, were all heretics. And you want to trust for our Fenton, really? But another thing, too, is the um, some of the so-called identity, so-called preachers use the NASB, the New American Standard Bible. If memory serves me correctly, there is a Catholic version of the NASB. It uses the Catholic manuscripts. You know, the people that burn people at the stake for having a Bible in their own language. Oh yeah, those people. Where did, the, where did Jesus ever tell uh, his followers to burn people at the stake for reading his words in the in English or German or any other language for that matter. Where is that in the Bible? Oh, that's right. It's in John chapter 66 and verse 6. You know, John 666. Yeah. And then you got idiots that in the so-called identity movement that tells you, oh, well, there's no, there's no devil. What? 
Yeah, they actually say this. Oh, but more on this later. Let's go take a look at the Bible stuff. Now, suppose you find somebody that actually believes every word of the King James Bible. But, of course, they don't really read it. That's the problem. So, and you tell them, oh, yeah, I think Christians are God's chosen people. And, of course, they've been taught from the beginning, first time they entered into a Baptist church, that the Antichrist are God's chosen people. And, of course, they're going to tell you Rome crucified Jesus. But the thing is, they really don't read their Bible. That's the problem. You know, they don't read the Bible. That's the problem. They don't. Anybody that read John chapter 8 would have a hard time believing that the group of people that the Baptists claim are the chosen people really are. Let's take a look at 1 John chapter 2 and verse 22. Who is a liar? But he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ. Christ is just a Greek rendering of the Hebrew word Messiah, the anointed one. So who is a liar? But he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ. He is Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. Is there a specific group of people in this world that deny that Jesus is the Christ? Yes, there is. And there is millions of them in the Middle East. And in New York. And Los Angeles. So. <clears throat> because if they believed in Jesus, then they would be Christians. But in verse 23, we read, Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. But he that acknowledgeth the Son hath the Father also. So, basically, Baptists will tell you that the Antichrists are God's chosen people. But when you run around saying, well, King James is full of errors, they're not going to listen to you. And the thing is, just because you do not understand something doesn't mean it's an error. Sometimes the Lord hides things in the Bible so that we have to dig them out. You know, that's why Christ spoke in parables. So that the average Joe who really wasn't looking for the truth, but a lot of people followed Christ because they were getting fed. They wanted those fishes. They wanted that bread. They were following him for a free meal. Not because they really wanted to listen to what he was teaching. Sad, but true. Really. But when you start telling everybody the King James is in error, the Baptists are not going to listen to you. But then again, they don't they don't read their own Bible. So, you know, if they did and read John, like I said, read John chapter eight, they would question what the so-called pastors are teaching them. I know because I used to be invited to Bible studies at their churches and ask questions in a non-confrontational way and read the words of Christ. And reading the words of Christ gets you kicked out of a Bible so-called believing assembly. Of course, Bob got kicked out of Sermon Audio, a audio website where they post so-called sermons from so-called Christians for quoting Jesus, condemning a certain group of people. Oh, you're not a good fit. We deleted your channel. Oh, okay, thank you. Memory serves me correctly, I paid them for that channel, for space. 
And of course, the King James Bible online, same thing. Bob got deleted three or four times for quoting Jesus, speaking to a certain group of people that the Baptists think are the chosen people. So, the NASB, which some of the so-called identity preachers use, is not from the Greek majority text. They are from the Catholic minority text. And, of course, they'll make the charges that, well, you know, the King James adds verses and chapters in the Bible. But we could flip that around and say, well, the Catholics version deletes certain things from the Bible. You want an example of this? Let's take a look at Matthew 17. And verse 15. Verse 14. And when they were come to the multitude, there came to him a certain man, kneeling down to him, Jesus, and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is lunatic and sore vexed. For oft times he falleth into the fire and oft into the water. And I brought him to thy disciples, and they could not cure him. Verse 17. And Jesus answered and said, O oh, faithless and perverse generation. Who's he talking to here? The disciples. How long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him, the child, hither to me. And Jesus rebuked the devil. Oh, wait a minute. Jesus, you can't be rebuking the devil because Christian identity preachers say there is no devil. The devil doesn't even exist. So, yeah, so the King James is wrong, they'll tell you. Boy, I'll tell you what. This is the kind of nonsense that the devil plants within the community. And Jesus rebuked the devil, and he departed out of him. Jesus cast out a demon. And the child was cured from that very hour. Then came the disciples to Jesus' part and said, why could we not cast him out? And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, If you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Because of your unbelief. You ever notice in the movies when uh, somebody's possessed of a devil or a demon, whatever, they always call a Catholic priest in, right? And the Catholic priest is powerless against the devil. Absolutely powerless, at least in the movies. So, the modern Bibles end this part of the verse right here. And then they skip to this and while they abode in galilee jesus said unto them the son of man shall be betrayed into the hands of men and they shall kill him and the third day he shall be raised again and they were exceeding sorry hey jesus why couldn't we cast this devil out of this kid oh because of your unbelief but that is in the modern bibles they leave out Verse 21 in the King James. Why couldn't we cast this one out? Jesus said, How be it, this kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. Evidently, this was a very powerful devil. And the only way to get rid of this kind is by prayer and fasting. You think the devils would want you to not know how to cast them out with prayer and fasting? Oh, well, the King James adds these verses. They add this to the Bible. This is not in the original manuscripts. 
Huh. No, I think I think the uh, I think the modern Catholic version deletes this because the devils that's behind the uh, the the Vatican manuscripts doesn't want you to know how to cast out devils with prayer and fasting. But that's just my opinion. So in Matthew 13, Jesus tells us a parable. And then in verse 10, we read, And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? Well, why do you speak to us in parables? You ever heard a preacher say, well, you know, they were simple folk and and uh, Jesus had to talk to them in parables and earthly, earthly things so that they could understand. You ever heard that? Oh, yeah, they were simple folk. So, you know, he couldn't explain things deeply to them. He had to use things that they understood, like farming language like casting seed and things of that nature. But the disciples said, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? Verse 11, He, Jesus, answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you, given unto you, to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. Wow. For whosoever hath to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever hath not from him shall be taken away, even that he hath. Therefore speak I to them in parables, because they sing, seeing see not, and hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, Isaiah, which saith, By hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand, and seeing ye shall see, and shall not perceive. For this people's heart is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, their spiritual eyes, lest at any time they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. For verily I say unto you that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which ye see, and have not seen them, and to hear those things which ye hear, and have not heard them. You know, it's a shame that the average so-called churchgoer, Christian, whatever you want to call them, will not pick up a Bible and read it. I mean, all you got to do is get a King James, Geneva, whatever, read three chapters every day. How long does that take? 15 minutes, maybe? You know, if you want to really do it well, uh, read six chapters every day because if you read three chapters every day within one year you will have read the bible from cover to cover what's 15 minutes i mean really uh it's half of a tv show of a half hour tv show minus commercials of course uh, makes me sad really so Satan plants these devils within the community. All right, so is there a devil? Hmm. I mean, can you imagine telling people, oh, there's no devil? And this guy, I think uh, I think it's Sheldon Emery, I think. He was very big in identity circles. Had money to spread his teachings far and wide. Matthew 9, 32, And they went out, behold, they brought to him a dumb man possessed with a devil. Oh, the devil doesn't, doesn't exist, right? Wow. 
Oh, I forgot the King James is in error. Oh, yeah. In Luke chapter 4, you can read it in the King James. The devil was tempting Christ. Oh, that really wasn't the devil. Uh, that's just our evil nature. So basically, these devil deniers are saying that Christ was tempting himself with his evil nature. Think about it. Did Christ have an evil nature that was tempting himself? This is the kind of foolishness that, you know, Matthew 4.1, Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil, the non-existent devil. It doesn't really exist. Wow. Uh, so all these times that de uh, they cast out devils, something that doesn't exist. In Matthew 25, 41, Then shall he say unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Prepared for the something that doesn't even exist. Wow. This is the kind of nonsense that they, the devil's kids put out so that when people do hear the identity message, oh, well, you know, the Bible you believe in is wrong. There's no devil. Uh, let's go run to the Vatican for our Bible. I mean, you know, this is why they consider them heretics. And pretty much they are. There's very few that uh, identity people that I actually consider how would I say? Sound doctrine? Oh, yeah. How about Revelation chapter 20, verse 1? And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan. Oh, wait, the devil and Satan don't exist. And bound him a thousand years and cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loosed for a little season. Let's go to Revelation chapter 12. Verse 7. And there was war in heaven Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought his angels. What? Oh, there's no devil. And prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan. So what? Michael was fighting against himself and his angels? Really? This is the kind of idiocy that is in the so-called identity movement. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Oh, but the devil doesn't even exist, they'll tell you. Wow. You know, it's no wonder the movement was uh, dying. And then you got the Worldwide Church of God, so-called, uh, Herbert Armstrong. He taught that the Antichrist were Judah. Seriously, he did. Oh, yeah, well, we're the 11 tribes, the uh, English people. But uh, the Antichrist, those are really Judah. I don't think so. But uh, and you got a lot of different other flavors, too. I can't even I can't even name them all. But, you know, it's just sad that uh, people don't read their book that people died for. People died to give us the Bible in our own language. You know, William Tyndale, he was born in 1494. He was murdered in 1536. He was a scholar from England. He was actually a linguist 
which is a language scholar, by the way. Do you know he translated the Bible into English, and you know what his reward was? Being burned at the stake for daring to give people the Bible in their language. And his, his work was used uh, extensively for the King James. I mean, unbelievable. Uh, so the Catholic Church burned him. So, yeah. The, so let's run and use the Catholic Church's manuscripts. I don't think so. They were the ones that tried to keep you from having the Bible in your language. And, of course, there's a uh, group called the uh, A. And then there's a... Uh, the next letter would be D, and then the third letter would be L, and this group, if you don't know who they are, you should look it up, claims that the Vatican supports them in all their endeavors. Yeah. Yeah, the, the, let's just say that group is a group of antichrists. So... You know, there's a uh, couple of groups. There's a group called the Temple Mount Faithful and the Temple Institute. Two different groups. Their entire purpose of being is they want to build a temple. And they want to reinstitute animal sacrifice as mentioned in the book of Leviticus. And that would be a denial of what Christ did on the cross. Total slap in the face, total denial. And I believe it's going to happen in my lifetime. I really do. There was a, from what I understand, a full-size replica of the temple made in Brazil. I think it's San Paulo. You know, it took them three and a half years to build that temple. It's a full-size replica. So could they build this temple in, over there that they have everything ready to build this temple? Everything's ready. From all the research and studying I've done, they've got everything up prepared. Just like uh, David had everything prepared for Solomon. All he had to do was throw it together. They have everything ready. They've even trained a pe uh, priesthood. Well, their priesthood. Isn't that going to be the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet? Reinstituting animal sacrifice? I think so. I, I, that's my opinion. And one day, we're going to find out whether or not who is for real and who's not. I found out today from someone that uh, one of their, I don't know, in their group said I was controlled opposition. <laughs> so, oh, boy. Yeah, boy, if. If I'm controlled opposition, I'm being paid very poorly, trust me. So, oh well, what are you going to do? All I know is I'm just one guy trying to bring light, bring the light of Christ to the remnant flock. I mean, like I say, I don't do this for money. Once in a while, somebody will send me a little something. That's nice, you know, because, hey, I buy my own microphones. I buy my own computers. I buy everything I need for this ministry. So-called, I guess you could say. You know, I don't have any sponsors. And those of you that helped me in the past, thank you very much. You know, a good computer is expensive. Um, yeah. 
But, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's, uh, it's just sad when I look at things, you know. But I know one day, uh, when I'm finally kicked off of socialist media, that I'll know it's my time to do something different. And I've always noticed with the Lord, when one door closes, another door opens. I've always noticed that. So, which is why I always try to uh, keep my channels up as long as possible. And like I've mentioned in the past, if anybody's interested in getting my work on an SD card or a USB drive, let me know. Let me know. You know, um, you can write me at palm, like a palm tree, P-A-L-M, palm beach, like next to the ocean, B-E-A-C-H, weddings with an S, like getting married, palm beach weddings at gmail.com. And uh, at least 128 gig, at least. But not only that, try to get me at least a version 3.1. Boy, I, I, you know, they don't call it's $15. And people will say, oh, I can get this one for $11. I'm going to save $4. And then it takes me seven or eight hours to load the thing on the slow drive. Don't do that. Come on, spend the extra four bucks. I'm giving you all this information for free. I mean, come on. So... I even pay for the postage. I mean, come on. So, all right. Well, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor. I hope you learned something. In Jesus' precious name, amen.